Hey there, you know, Prophet David Taylor here. Hello to my Facebook audience and um, live on Periscope as well. <clears throat> so waiting for my Periscope to kick in. Uh, so, God bless y'all. It's 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday. That's my regular time. Hey there, Periscope audience. And so, I want to start out with my tagline the way I always do. What's my tagline? My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Okay? So, uh, now those of you that uh, want to support me, you asked about support, uh, I put a paypal.me link in my Periscope profile, and it's also on all my Facebook Live videos. Uh, and also want to say welcome to the people that are hearing me on SoundCloud or through the podcast or through whatever way you're experiencing uh, this broadcast, if you're not listening to it live, if you're listening to the replay, God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And um, so uh, if you donate on paypal.me, uh, those donations are tax deductible because Prophet David Taylor NFP is a 501c3 not-for-profit with tax-exempt status. So your donations are tax deductible. You can also donate through Amazon Smile. Uh, uh, Amazon Smile is where when you shop, if you go through the Amazon Smile link, then a portion of uh, Amazon's portion, whatever you buy, goes to the not-for-profit of your choice. So that's also on Amazon Smile. You can also buy my music. I'm setting up uh, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. I've already got some music out, but more stuff I'm doing there. So thank you if you want to support me there. Now, how and where to find me? The best way to find me online is always to look up the hashtag. Always look up hashtag PDT because I hashtag everything I do online with the hashtag PDT. Okay? My regular broadcast is right now every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, on Facebook Live and Periscope. And my Periscope also goes live on my Twitter. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's PDTSOTC. That stands for Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross, P-D-T-S-O-T-C. And then on second Thursday nights, I do a very specific teaching called No More Genies, where we deal with genie concept and everything that has arisen and, and messed us up as believers because of genie concept. That's Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live and Periscope. And then as I get the podcasts and the sound clouds and the other methods out there, you can listen to the broadcast that way too. Okay? All right, so also on my page, my Facebook page this week, I put some recommendations. So I recommend that you listen to Apostle John Eckhart's uh, The Good Land Challenge. Apostle Eckhart has been doing a series of challenges all year long, and right now he's talking about the good land, entering into the good land, entering into the promised land in this life, and uh, what that means from Scripture and how to claim that and how to walk in that and how to build your faith to get all the promises that God means for you to have in this life. So I highly recommend you listen to Apostle John Eckhart, The Good Land Challenge. So I'll put a link to his page on my page, and then also there's a new website, uh, excuse me, there's a, yeah, a new website and a new page has been launched called The Proverbs 14.1 Woman, okay? And that's by Prophetess Wanda Jabert. Highly recommend that you follow her. Let you listen to what she has to say. She's a very strong woman of God, a woman of virtue, uh, a woman that has lived out what she's preaching and teaching. And uh, so if you're uh, a, a woman of God and you want to be a wise woman of God and you want to walk in the ways of the virtuous woman, the woman of valor, the woman of might, then check out Proverbs 14.1. And I put that link on my Facebook page, okay? PDT recommendation. All right, so let's jump into what God has for us today. Quick word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your prophetic word. Please flow through me, O oh God. Please speak through me. Please use me, O oh God, as you have ordained for me to be used to release your prophetic word to bless your people. And I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, the word for today is, let God arise. Let God arise. Now, our scripture reference is, of course, Psalm 68, but before I get to it, I want to say this. What I'm going to be talking about today is about not fracturing, not fracturing the unity of scripture. I'm so tired of people 
isolating certain verses or certain principles or whatever and fracturing the unity of Scripture. Because when you fracture the unity of Scripture, you don't get the whole truth. You don't get the whole picture. You don't get the whole idea. You don't get the whole concept. You get partial truth. You get a partial picture. You get a partial concept. Okay? And then you won't be able to get the fullness. You won't be able to get the fullness of what God is saying. You won't be able to get the fullness of what God is promising. You won't be able to get the fullness of what you're supposed to be walking in when you fracture the unity of Scripture like that. Okay? So I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about when we look into the Scripture. So the prophetic word for today is let God arise. Let God arise. Okay? So make sure I'm where I need to be. So let's look at Psalm 68. Now, Psalms is uh, right in the middle of the Bible, right in the middle of the Old Testament. It's one of the biggest books in the Bible. Um, so Psalms 68. Uh, and we're going to start with verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Stop. Now, I've heard so many songs, you know, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered, all that, all that. Okay, but that's supposed to actually happen. If you are trying to walk in that, when God arises, his enemies are supposed to be scattered. When the Lord stands up, when the Lord rises, nothing and nobody can stand before him. No devil, no demon, <clears throat> not Satan himself, no weather conditions, no, you know, not even death itself can stand before God Almighty when he rises. But many times we're singing about a victory that we haven't actually realized because you don't understand that when God arises, when God is moving in his purposes, or when you're asking God to rise in your life, the first thing that's supposed to happen is the enemies are supposed to be scattered. Okay? So you can pray this back to God and you can claim this, you can speak this. You're supposed to add your faith. You're supposed to hear and read the word of God and believe what you're reading. So your enemies are supposed to be scattered. You're not supposed to be going through all the time. If you're going through something for a season while you're fighting, you're wrestling, you're fighting, you're using the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, but the enemies are supposed to be scattered. They're not supposed to be in your face forever. Okay, because when the Lord stands up, the enemy's supposed to be scattered. And then it says, let them also that hate him flee before him. That means the people hate God are supposed to run when the Lord show up. And they do. I've seen it. <clears throat> people that hate God are people that ain't right with God. When the Spirit of God shows up, when the Spirit of God begins to manifest in tongues, in prophetics, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, in miracles, okay? When the Spirit of God begins to manifest, they run. If it's somebody that hates God, or some Christian that ain't right with God, when the Lord arises, they're going to flee. That's supposed to happen. Okay? That's supposed to be a result of God arising. Verse 2, As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Now, do you see one of the benefits you have as a Christian? That when God arises in your life, that his enemies and the people that hate him, they're supposed to flee. They're supposed to be driven away the way you drive away smoke. And as wax melts in the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. That's supposed to be the result when God arises. Did you know that? I'm so tired of watching saints shout about victories that they don't actually have. You're supposed to actually have the victory, and it's supposed to look like that. Scattered enemies, people that hate God, fleeing, driven away like smoke is driven away, melting like wax before the fire. That's how wicked people are supposed to perish at the presence of God. That's why it's so important to always walk in the presence of God because that's one of your benefits. Walking in the Spirit, this is one of the benefits of walking in the Spirit because what does that look like on a practical tip? I'll tell you. If ever you're in a situation, all you have to do is start speaking in tongues. Start speaking in tongues and watch how people react. If you're ever in a situation and you know you're dealing with demons, unclean spirits, call them out. Mm -hmm. Call them out. You have to call unclean spirits by name if you didn't know that. Call them out. Call out somebody on a spirit of rage or a spirit of jealousy or a spirit of envy. 
or a spirit of unrighteous anger, or a spirit of lust, or a spirit of Jezebel, or a spirit of Ahab, or a spirit of Python, or a spirit of Leviathan. Call them out. Call them by name and watch what happens. Watch what happens when you call them unclean spirits by name. Okay? That's one of the benefits you have of having God in your life and walking in his presence, walking in obedience to his leading, walking in obedience to his commandments. That when he arises, you call on him, and he shows up. All this is supposed to happen with the, happen with the enemies, okay? <clears throat> Verse 3 says, But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, or Jah, but Yah in the Hebrew, and rejoice before him. So what does that mean? What that means is that... <clears throat> One of the benefits of God arising, God arising is a bad thing for the enemies because we talked about, the first two verses talk about all the bad things that happen when you are an enemy of God and God shows up. But God says the righteous have a different response. Let the righteous be glad. Are you glad in your life? When the Lord shows up, he brings gladness. Then it says, let them rejoice before God. Let them exceedingly rejoice. You know what that means? That means you're supposed to be giddy with happiness. Is that the kind of life that you're living? What makes you giddy with happiness? When you get the desires of your heart. Okay? The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. If you're not living your dream, if you don't have the things that you hope for, your heart is sick. Okay? You bent over. You're heavy with disappointment. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. That means when you get the desires of your heart, it gives you energy. And we know that's true. In a very practical sense, we know how real it is when you get something you've been wanting a long time. When you get something you've been desiring a long time. When you get something that you've been praying for a long time. It re-energizes you and you won't even be tired. You won't even be tired. You won't even be tired, okay? Okay. So the Bible says, let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God, yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. And King David was a master of that. King David knew how to come before God and let it all go. He knew how to love God with everything that he had. But why? David said why all the time. David said, I love the Lord because he heard my cry. King David said, I love the Lord because he took me from the sheep coat and made me king over Israel. So in other words, King David said, I went from tending the sheep and I was out there writing music and fighting lions and bears with my bare hands to being king over the nation, okay? So in other words, he was living his dream. He was, a, he was living a life that was so far beyond God did for King David exceedingly abundantly over all he asked or thought. That's the kind of life you're supposed to be living. And when you do that, you will exceedingly rejoice. Unfortunately, what has happened with a lot of church and religious situations as you've been taught to praise God, but you've not been taught to expect the exceedingly rejoicing life that comes when God arises. See that? You're supposed to be married to the right person. And you're supposed to have a godly marriage. You're supposed to have enough money to give birth to all the things that God has put in your heart to give birth to. You're supposed to be living in the place of your dreams. Even if the city God told you to go to, you didn't want to go. When you get there, God is going to make it so fruitful and prosperous because you're obedient to his will that it's going to be better than what you even had in mind. So when you wake up every day and you look at your house or your apartment or wherever you are, is that the house of your dreams? Are you married to the right person? What about your career? Do you do what you love for a living? And as I tell you all the time, I'm out here practicing what I'm preaching. I'm not doing anything that I'm not, I'm not telling you anything that I'm not doing myself, okay? And I write for a living. That's what I do. I write music. I write print books. I write e-books. Um, uh, I'm a wordsmith. God uses me prophetically to minister. So that's my gifting. That's my calling. And I'm living it. I'm doing it. So I'm not, again, talking about anything that I'm not actively in the process of doing. OK, but is that uh, are you living that exceedingly rejoicing life before God or have you been taught like so many Christians? I'm sad to say to have that dichotomy in your life where you go to church and you worship, but your life ain't nowhere near what it should be. 
Now, there's always going to be that period of time where we have to praise God for something we haven't manifested yet. But eventually, your life is supposed to manifest. It's supposed to be, okay, where God wants it to be. And you're supposed to get the desires of your heart. Uh, what does that look like practically? Abraham and Sarah. God promised Abraham and Sarah Isaac when Abraham was 75 and Sarah was 65. It was 25 years later. <laughs> It was 25 years later. Abraham was 100 years old. 100 years old. 100 years old. Okay? But Isaac eventually showed up. That's what's supposed to happen in your life as a believer. Isaac's supposed to show up. You're supposed to eventually get the promise. You see that? But many times we have been taught to split, to fracture the unity of Scripture, and just, you know, praise God because he's good, and we should, and praise God by faith, and we should, but the, the other component is that eventually, okay, the exceeding rejoicing is supposed to be in your life. You're supposed to be giddy with excitement. You're supposed to be so happy you can't contain it. And then your praise will be in spirit and in truth. It'll be real. It won't be something that you're doing out of your will all the time. It won't be something that you're making yourself do. It'll be something that you're so happy you won't be able but to help to erupt in praise with God. And that's what the Bible says. We're supposed to exceedingly rejoice. Not just rejoice, but exceedingly. Uh, sing unto God, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah or Yah, and rejoice before him. Okay? <clears throat> but then, the Bible says in verse 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God set it to solitary in families he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Stop. That's verses 5 and 6. Verse 5 just told you that if you don't have a dad, when God arises, he will become your dad. Did you know that? I can't tell you the number of people that I've seen in my life that say, I didn't have a father, or I had a bad relationship with my father, or I don't know who my father is, or, you know, my dad ain't nothing, he never did nothing for me, and they're angry or bitter, whatever. Let me tell you something. When you become born again, and you become part of God's kingdom, one of the benefits you have is that when God arises, he'll become your dad. What does that look like in a practical sense? What that means is that everything your father should have taught you, God will teach you. It would have been better if your natural dad did what he was supposed to do. But if he didn't, or maybe he died, maybe your father was a soldier. Maybe your father was in the military, and he was out there serving his country, and he died. It doesn't always have to be uh, an irresponsibility on the part of the dad. But if you find yourself in this world without a dad, one of the benefits of God arising is that the Bible says he'll become a father of the father. He'll become your dad. He'll pick up the slack. So I want you to cash in on the full benefits of being a Christian that you don't have to spend one more day mourning what your natural father did or didn't do. You can look up to Heavenly Father and claim his word. You can always pray God's word back to him and say, you promise to be a father if I'm fatherless. So let God arise and become my dad. Then he says, a judge of the widows. What does that mean? That means if you're a woman and your husband has died, now, it can be for a variety of reasons, but if you stood up there and you had a wedding ceremony and you took vows and you said to death do his part and that's what you expected to happen, you expected to live your life with your husband and y'all would see old age together and then die when your days were up, but your husband died early. God says he's a judge of the widows. What does that mean? That means that God will step in and pick up the slack. That's one of the benefits of God arising. So if you're a woman whose husband has died and you're a Christian, you have the right to claim this promise and ask God to arise in your life and to judge your widowhood, to let you not be in lack because your husband's dead. A uh, judge of widows is God in his holy habitation. And then God said it to solitary and families. There's another promise. If you're lonely, if you want to see how lonely some people are, just go on their Facebook. Good gravy from the Navy. I'm not even making that up. Some people on Facebook every day talking about how lonely they are and blah, 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 blah. The Bible says God sets the solitary in families. If you don't have a family, God will set you in one. Did you know that? 
Did you know that if you're not married and you want to get married or you don't have a family and you want to have a family? Now, it might not look like you thought it was going to look. Some people get to a point in their life and they either couldn't have kids or they're past the age of having kids. Sometimes you have to adopt. Sometimes God brings other kids in your life and you have spiritual children. Some people end up raising their nieces and their nephews because I was raised by uh, my aunt. Uh, I wasn't raised by my biological mom. So it may not always look like what you think it's going to look like, but the Bible says God sets a solitary in family. So one of the benefits of God arising in your life is that if you don't have a family, God will set you in one. Did you know that? If you're lonely and you're disconnected and you don't feel like you belong anywhere, if you are a Christian, you can pray this prayer back to God and use your faith and claim this. You can go to Father God and say, God, I want you to arise in my life and I want you to set me in a family. So you don't have to spend the rest of your days feeling like you're disconnected without a family. It's one of the benefits of being a Christian. Then it says, I'm still in verse 6, He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. Oh, what bounds us with chains? Well, we can be bound with a lot of chains. You can be bound with spiritual chains. That's unclean spirits and demonic oppression. You can have something in your spirit, in your mind, in you that's holding you back from your full potential. The Bible says God wants to bring you out of that. You can have financial chains, debt, okay? Because if you had a bunch of debt, you can't do nothing, okay? God wants to bring you out of that. Physical chains, poor health, sickness, okay? If, if, you, if your body's not healthy, what can you do? You can't even work, okay? God wants to bring you out of that. Bad relationships. Haven't you, you've either been or you've seen a situation where somebody's in a relationship and it looked like, Amen. Erica says student loans. That's right. We need deliverance. We need debt repayment for student loans. Haven't you ever been in, you've either been in a situation or you've seen a situation where someone is in this relationship and it's like, it's like they're in a cage. It's like it's draining all the life out of them. Okay. God doesn't mean for your relationships to have that kind of impact in your life because he said, I come to you, you might have life and have life in fullest measure. So if you're in a relationship that's draining life, and binding you, God wants to bring you out of that. That's one of the benefits of being a Christian, is that you don't have to stay in no relationship that's a jail. <laughs> if your relationship is jail, God ain't never meant for your relationship to be jail. You don't have to stay jailed up, okay? And then it says, uh, last part of verse 6, I'm in here because I'm almost out of time. It says, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land, O Lord. You know what that means? That means that if we rebel against God's word and we don't believe God and we don't believe his promises and we don't want to hear his voice, you're going to stay in that dry land. Haven't you ever wondered why there are some believers that seem to be prospering and some believers that seem to be in the same place all the time, but they both say, both filled with the Holy Ghost, both speaking in tongues, both shouting, falling out, running around the church. Why is there a difference in results? The Bible just told you why. Because you have to obey. <laughs> you have to believe God. You have to believe that what God says is true. And then you have to do what the Lord is telling you to do. You hear me say it all the time because I'm consistent. You cannot just accept Jesus as Savior. You must accept him as Lord. It's the easiest thing in the world to accept Jesus Christ as Savior because all you have to do is stand there believing and receiving because he did all the work on Calvary's cross. That's why people love that part. But if you want to accept him as Lord, you must crucify your flesh. You must crucify your ideas, and you have to do that every day. You must wake up every day and say to Jesus Christ, not my will, but thine be done. At some point in your life, you're going to have to understand that he's the teacher and you're the student. At some point, you're going to have to understand that he's the shepherd and you the sheep. At some point, you're going to have to understand that Father God is the potter and we are the clay. And you're going to have to understand you have to let God have his way in your life. Otherwise, you just want to accept him as Savior. You don't want to accept him as Lord and you are never going to get the full promises of God. You're never going to get to where God wants you to be. You're never going to manifest the full blessing of God if you don't accept him as Lord. If you don't crucify and lay down your self-driven, your self-willed life and listen to what the Lord is telling you, obey his voice. And that's not always easy, okay? Because flesh don't want to die. 
and stubbornness and pride don't want to die. And, and so God is going to chastise us. That is Hebrews 12, 11. God's going to chastise you. God's going to whip you. God's going to chastise you, but the Bible says no chastening. While you're going through it, it seems pleasant, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them that are exercised thereby. Hebrews 12, 11. And what that means is that once God gets through working in your life the way he wants to work, even though the lesson process was rough, what it produces in your life will produce a peaceable fruit of righteousness, and you'll learn how to obey. After God gets you letting you have your way, and you mess it up, and you get embarrassed, and ain't nothing but a hot mess, you're going to go to Jesus and say, Lord, I did it my way, and now it's a mess. Please deliver me. Please tell me what to do, and you're going to learn how to obey. And once you learn how to obey, that's when the full manifestation of God comes in your life, when you accept him as Lord and not just as Savior. But the Bible says if you don't want to do that, like back to Psalm 68.6, if you don't want to do that, you want to rebel, then you're going to stay in that dry land. That's why a lot of people ain't married. You've been asking God for a spouse. You know why your spouse hasn't shown up yet? Because you won't obey. God is trying to get you ready to be married, and you don't like the process. It doesn't look like you thought it was going to look. Okay, but if you are going to be a godly husband, if you are going to be a godly wife, God has to prepare you for that. Godliness is not natural to us. When we're born in this Lord, we're born into this world. We're born rebellious. We're born in that flesh cursed nature that we got from Adam and Eve. We're born the opposite of God. We're born backwards from God. That's why we fight against our parents. That's why we disobey and disrespect mom and daddy, because we're born in sin. We're born in rebellion. So just like mom and daddy have to put you in check, and correct you, Father God going to put you in check and correct you to teach you how to obey. But if you don't want to hear it and you don't believe it and you don't listen, you're going to stay in that dry place. And that's why so many of y'all don't have the money that you want because you keep asking God for money, but you're not listening to what he's telling you about what to do. He's giving you instruction about what to do with the money you have, with the ideas you have, with the job you have, and you're not obeying. That's why your land is still dry. Because you're rebelling. Okay? I can't tell you the number of people that I have met that keep saying, oh, I need a prophetic word, Prophet Taylor. Uh, Prophet Taylor, can you give me a word from the Lord? Can I get a word? And if the Holy Ghost gives me something to say, I'm more than happy to let God use me and give you a prophetic word. And after you get that prophetic word, you have to obey it. <laughs> if you don't believe it and obey it, it's not going to do you any good. Your situation is not going to change. Okay, that's the difference among Christians. If you ever wondered why some people are always going through <laughs> and why some people are the same and their situation don't change is because they are rebellious. We keep trying to put it on God like there's something wrong with God. Mm -mm. There's nothing wrong with the Logos word, the written word of God. There's nothing wrong with Jesus Christ the living word of God, and there's nothing wrong with the rhema, the prophetic word of God, because anything that comes out of God's mouth is true and right. The problem is not the word. The Bible, Jesus, the prophetic word. The problem is not the word. The logos, the living word, the rhema word. The problem is not the word. The problem is you don't believe it, and you're not obeying it. The problem is you're still doing what you want to do. Okay? That's what the Bible tells you. That's why your land is dry. So if you want to turn your money around, you've got to stop doing what you think with money and do what the Lord is telling you to do. If you want to turn your health around, you've got to stop eating the way you want to eat. You've got to stop treating your body the way you think and listen to the one that invented the human body and listen to the diet tips he's given you or, or, or listen to the leading the Holy Spirit has given you. You've got to do what the Lord is telling you to do. Otherwise, your land going to stay dry. So I'm so tired <laughs> of this teaching and this preaching that people have, have disseminated over the years that give Christians the idea that we could just do whatever we want and walk in the full blessings of God. That is not the truth. What is true is what the Bible teaches and what the God has said to us from the beginning, that we must hear his voice, believe his word, and then obey. We got HBO, hear, Believe, obey. Hear, believe, obey. Okay? That's how it works. If you want the blessing, 
So if you want the blessing of God arising and, and the enemies being scattered and all the benefits that he promises, then you've got to do what the Lord is telling you to do. What does that look like in a practical sense And I'm done? Sometimes you're in situations and the Holy Spirit tells you to shut your mouth. Don't say nothing. Sometimes we just, we just, mm, you ever been there where you just, mm. <laughs> well, you want to say something so bad when you just, mm. and you just, mm, you feel that, that there's trembling inside of you because you want to get this person a piece of you. You want to let them know, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind because let me tell you something. And the Holy Ghost say, don't, don't say that. Don't say nothing. And sometimes you just, mm, you ever been in a situation like that? And when the Spirit of God tells you to be quiet like that, you know what will happen? What will happen is that God will defend you and you don't have to defend yourself. But the only way that happens is when you obey and crucify your flesh, that flesh man that come running up to your tongue and just want to cuss somebody out and want to get profane and ugly. We've all been there. We've all been there like Peter. We've all been, I don't care what you say, we've all been there where we're in a situation and we just want to go off. And Holy Ghost say, don't do that. You have to crucify your flesh. You have to crucify your self-will in that moment and say, okay, not my will, but thine be done. And when you do that, God himself will defend you. Okay? HBO, hear, believe, and obey. That's how it works. Okay? All right. So if there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen. If there's no prayer request, then I will pray a quick closing prayer. Any prayer requests? All right. Um, let's pray a closing prayer. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, O oh God, uh, for accepting you as Savior and as Lord. Thank you for your mighty Logos word and the living word, Jesus Christ, and your mighty rhema prophetic word, O oh God. Thank you that you are speaking from heaven, O oh God, and telling us what to do. And thank you, O oh God, that you want us to have victory, that when you arise, you want the enemies to be scattered, and you want us to be set in families, and you want to be a judge for the widows and a father for the fatherless, oh, fatherless, oh God. Thank you that you want us to rejoice and call you by your name, yea, even exceedingly rejoice before you, oh God. Thank you for your marvelous and precious promises. So today, oh God, we want to HBO. We want to hear your word. We want to believe you, and we want to obey. So thank you for another chance another day to hear you believe you and obey and we thank you for it and we give you all the glory we want to go for go forward in victory in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen all right thank you so much those of you that tuned in live and those of you that are watching the replay or listening to this broad this uh podcast this audio uh to any various means thank you so much for listening uh, I encourage you to go back and listen all the way from the top so uh, you don't miss anything. There's a lot to talk about during this half hour. Thank you so much. I hope you have a blessed week. I hope you're able to walk in that word this week, that you ask God to arise in your life, and that you don't fracture the unity of Scripture, and that every blessing that's supposed to come from God arising is yours this week. Amen, and God bless. <laughs>